Carmen St. Kings did a, a summer cabbage variety trial this year. Um, we all have CSAs, and so it's nice to be able to give a good variety of things, and it's fun to give cabbage before fall. Um, people need their coleslaw in the summertime, you know? Uh, but cabbages don't, don't do as well in the heat as, um, as they do in the fall, so we decided to do a trial and see if we could um, find some varieties that do especially well. Um, yeah, so this is, man, somehow these screens don't, these slides don't look like how they did on my computer, but <laughs> most of it's here, I think. Um, so the, the way we set up our um, trial was to do four varieties. We chose them all from Johnny's catalog. Um, Capture, Farrow, and Primo Vantage are all regular little round cabbages. Caraflex is a conical one, but they're all, um, you know, bred, bred for the summertime, so. Okay. Um, anyway, so we chose these four varieties to test out, and um, we decided we would do two successions, one planted as soon as we could in the, in the spring, and I think our second one went in three weeks later. So these cabbages are harvested in July and August when it's really hot. Um, so this is how we laid out the plots. Um, basically, one, one row in the table is one row in the field. Um, and uh, I, think, I think we did 10 or 12 cabbages per plot. Um, and I set up each succession exactly the same way. And so what we were, what we were measuring at harvest time was um, how many cabbages were harvestable in each plot and how much they all weighed together so we could, um, yeah, have an idea of percent yield basically and how much the cabbages weighed. Um, and we also paid attention to certain quality indicators. We um, rated them all for black rot, splitting, and cabbage looper pressure. Um, and we just rated them none, there was no pressure, some or much. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of like how it was different to grow cabbages for this trial than normal, I would say it pretty much wasn't the only thing that was uh, a little more work was being patient enough on harvest day, which is usually a very fast paced day, to slow down and like get out the scale and weigh everything and count everything. <laughs> <laughs> but not so bad, we did it. Everything got done. Um, yeah, and we learned some interesting things. Um, I don't have Kate's data, but I have Carmen's and mine. So if you want to know about that, you can ask Kate. <laughs> but we'll look at the yield stuff first. Uh, this is from Carmen's trial. Um, I will say that there wasn't a huge amount of statistically significant data, but um, it was still useful and, and, and interesting for me to find. So. Um, from this, you can see that Carmen doesn't have any uh, numbers for capture. We both didn't like that variety. It didn't do anything. Um, that was one, one important thing we learned. <laughs> um, but it looks like for her, Farrow was the most productive one. Um, and we found similar stuff uh, at our farm too. We did harvest the capture, but um, very late and it looked terrible. Uh, but I guess when I was when I was harvesting it, I didn't notice. I mean, there is some difference in the head harvest, but it all felt pretty much the same to me. I didn't like one variety more than the other for that reason. Um, but yeah, so we'll look at the the grass for weight. It's a little bit easier to see here that Farrow and Primo Vantage seem to be um, a little bit heavier than the other ones. They're still small cabbages, but. Um, yeah, so not statistically significant, but still notable. And for our data, actually, each succession separately wasn't significant, but when you combine the data together, it was. And uh, for our and Primo Vantage were the winners for weight. So that's, that's pretty fun to note. Um, I'll definitely grow those ones again. And um, yeah. So that's the, that's the yield stuff. And the quality stuff is almost more important to me because the, the cabbage can be heavy, but if it's split or ugly, no one's gonna wanna buy it. So um, this, this was really fun for me to notice. Um, yeah, I think I remember reading 
Carmen, when Liz did the write-up, that you had a lot of cabbage looper pressure on everything. So did we. <laughs> they don't care what variety it is, they want to eat it. But um, it looks like Farrow split the most, but did the best for black rot. So, you know, pick your poison, which one you care about most. Um, for us, we got really lucky with the splitting. Nothing really, nothing really went wrong. Um, and the only one that had big trouble with black rot was capture, and that was the problem variety anyways. I, it wasn't making heads and wasn't making heads, and I ignored it, and only when I went to till it in did I realize that there were cabbages there. <laughs> so we ate them, but they were ugly, and I don't think I put any on the market table. Um, yeah, so this is the first... Um, trial I'd done for the cooperators, and it was pretty fun to, to be organized about it. I'd, I, like to, I like to think about which varieties will do better, but if I was just doing it by myself, I might have compared two of them and not been really specific about it. And, you know, you only get one chance every year to try something. And so this was a good excuse to try four things and, and learn a lot. Um, yeah, and we were all sitting together at lunch talking about it, and it, we all had fun doing it, and we're excited to do another cabbage trial. <laughs> Maybe we'll get fancier and do red cabbages or something this year, but... <laughs> yeah, any questions? Can you explain what those numbers mean? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I meant to do that. Um, so they're on a scale from zero to one. Um, if we rated it none for no problem, that's a, a one. If we rated it some, that's a 0.5 and much is zero. So low numbers mean there was a problem. Closer to one means it did great. Yeah. Did you taste test that? Yeah. Oh, did we taste test the cabbages? No, we did not in an organized way. Um, yeah. In retrospect, I kind of wish that we had, but. I, I had some customers comment on how sweet and tender the cabbages were, so that's a, that was a nice surprise. <laughs> they are summer right? Yeah, they're they're bred for summer, so I think I think Johnny's did the good work there. Jack. Was there any difference in flea beetle pressure? I oh was there was there any difference in flea beetle pressure between all the varieties? I didn't notice too much flea beetle action on any of them. That was a lucky thing. Yeah. I can. Yeah, so for people who couldn't hear, Carmen said that um, flea beetles tend to be a problem earlier in the season, and because we're harvesting all these things in August, the actual final head of cabbage didn't interact with the flea beetles too much. So, yeah? Are you planning to replace capture with something else for the next go around? She's wondering if we'll replace capture with something else next year. Definitely yes. <laughs> I will not, not grow that one again. <laughs> Um, Kate, Kate's saying that uh, Capture was a new variety from Johnny's that they were extra excited about. Um, it was supposed to be way better than all the other ones, and yeah, not the experience on any of our farms. <laughs> Alice? Well, just to share on that, I mean, part of why we've been doing these variety trials in the Midwest is that a lot of the seed breeding and, and trials is happening on the coasts, and so this might be a really fantastic cabbage someplace that has less hot summers. Um, so to be like, well, let's trial these new varieties here in Iowa and see how they really do in the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there a difference in seed cost between any of these? I remember from a lettuce mm. variety trial that there's a huge difference in seed cost between different varieties. Yeah, he's wondering about seed costs between varieties. I don't remember. Do you guys remember? 
Yeah. Liz? <laughs> Yes. Uh, she's wondering if these were direct seeded or not. We grew them as transplants. I imagine you guys did too. Yeah. Anyone else? And yeah. We do ours in, in trays. I don't know how you guys did yours. Soil blocks. Soil blocks. Yeah. So there are some differences in, in the way we started our plants, but. <laughs> Back to Alice's um, observation that these are bred on the coast. Mm -hmm. Has anybody talked to Johnny? Said, "Hey, we did this trial, and mm -hmm. this did not grow well here." Now, are they getting feedback to their breeders? Wow, that's great. Uh, we should do that, and we should tell Johnny's. <laughs> Uh, he's wondering if there are similar days to maturity. Um, I th not really. I, I think I harvested, maybe I started harvesting the Primo Vantage first, and then Farrow came along, and then Caraflex. So they're, they're, they're within a, you know, a couple weeks of each other, but they definitely have different timing. Yeah. Sure. So, so there was some difference I in there. The <laughs> main price difference is like Farrow is an organic one, so the organic juices are more expensive. Question in the back there. Yeah. Can you reiterate what you found about cabbage worms and what I, I would think cabbage worms would be a real problem in the summer? And, and is that right? And so, what did you do about that, or what did you find out? Um, I learned that cabbage worms like to eat every cabbage. Doesn't matter the variety. Um, <laughs> we had a, we had a lot of them this year. Um, we sp we spray BT uh, to manage it, but we're not super consistent about remembering to do it. So our cabbages have some holes. <laughs> yeah. I found that the interseed onion, especially a, a bitter worm, cabbage worms don't like that, and they stay away from the cabbage. Interesting. Planting onions by cabbages might be a good idea. Did you check your bricks levels at all? We did not check the bricks levels. I've never done that. That would be kind of fun. Okay, maybe that's that. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah.